Hello and welcome back to Waygate Technologies. I'm Dan here for the Kraut Kramer Ultrasonic Instrument product line. Today I'd like to share with you our newest precision thickness gauge, the CL Go Plus. For those of you who remember our previous thickness offerings, the last uh, precision thickness gauge that we had was the CL5. Uh, that was a culmination of many years of development in precision measurement. Unfortunately, due to component obsolescence, uh, we had ended production of CL5. When it came time to design the replacement for the CL5, we decided to grow our existing Go Plus instrument platform that has been so successful for us in flaw detection and corrosion thickness gauging and add the additional measurement modes needed to do precision measurements. When we discuss precision measurements, we're talking about uh, precision of microns, uh, 0 0.001 millimeters, or tenths of one thousandths of an inch, 0 0.0001 inches precision. To achieve those levels of precision, there are additional digital signal processing techniques that we implement in the Go Plus platform. And we also use a different series of probes than we would normally use in a corrosion thickness gauge like the DMS Go. So for the CL Go, we're initially supporting uh, the Alpha 2 DFR and its equivalent uh, from Germany, the CLF 4. We have a direct contact miniature probe, that's the Alpha 2 or the CLF-5. And we have the CA-211, a little bit larger diameter, uh, can penetrate deeper into uh, thicker materials. The measurement range goes from about seven thousandths of an inch on the low end, using the, the Alpha 2 DFR up to uh, 20 inches or so with the CA211 probe. Let's turn the instrument off and we'll show you how simple this instrument is to operate. Turn the instrument on, let it boot up. This instrument that I happen to have in front of me has all of the options, it's a combo unit, has all of the options for flaw detection, thickness gauging, corrosion thickness gauging, and precision thickness gauging. Um, during the boot process, you can choose, do you want the flaw detector, corrosion gauge, or precision gauge? And if we don't do anything, like I did just there, the instrument will boot back up into the same mode that it was in when it was last shut down. We have booted into the precision thickness mode. I have a simplified set of the menus available. I have taken uh, the opportunity to assign one of my function keys to calibrate. So normal thickness gauge, we power up, we calibrate, and we go measure things. We're powered up. I hit the calibrate button. Now I've previously told it that my calibration standard is 99 thousandths of an inch thick. Put a drop of coupling back here on the 99 thousandths block. Couple up. The instrument says go ahead and take the probe off. And just that quickly we are calibrated. Go back to my 99 thousandth block and there we are. And now I can look at some different blocks. There's 79 thou. Go to a little bit thicker block. 138. So there's 158. So the instrument locks in on a reading very quickly. And is very repeatable. So just that simple. Now, for those of you who uh, fondly remember the CL5 instrument, um, you might be concerned about form factor. Uh, 
Here's a comparison of the CL5 and the CL Go side by side. Um, if you like the vertical orientation or portrait orientation of the display, you can certainly do that on the CL Go. It's a little bit more comfortable for me. My favorite operating mode is landscape mode. Um, when in landscaping mode, this can be flipped for right or left hand operation, just like the DMS Go and the USM Go. Uh, I'm right handed, so I'm typically operating the probe with my right hand and driving the instrument with my left. Uh, we have the hand strap. Um, many of you are familiar with the Go Plus platform. We have a hand strap that makes this instrument very easy to hold in one hand and still operate all of the controls with the with your thumb. I have selected a simplified menu set here. Uh, the only thing in the main menu is probe selection, calibration, and velocity. If you are using uh, materials other than steel, typically the, the instrument comes uh, preset for, uh, for carbon steel. If you're using other materials, you can go to the velocity list and select, scroll through a list of materials to get into the ballpark. Okay, if we go to mild steel and we do our calibration, I can either go to the calibration menu item and activate that or as I showed before I have the one function key assigned already to be uh, calibrate. One thing to be aware of in the upper left corner of the screen there are four small boxes. Right now I have uh, one box is lock this one's blank, this one's cal, this one's blank. So lock is the function performed by this function key. This function key is unassigned at the moment. Down in this corner is the cal, and this function key is unassigned at the moment. As we go through different processes on the instrument, you may see those function keys change. For instance, if we start calibration, the first thing that comes up is our known thickness for calibration. Now I've been using 0 0.099 inches. If I needed to change that to calibrate on say the 138 block, I can, one of my function keys is enter. So I hit enter. Come over here, I change this to 138. Now I'm done changing the number and now I'm back into the calibration process and go to my 138 block and we have 138. Right now I'm working with the simplified menu set. On the CL Go we have all of the options and setup capabilities uh, that would be familiar to a user of the DMS Go. So we have a very robust set of controls around gate positions, gain control, things like that. The instrument can be kept in a very simple operating mode and we can hide almost all of that complexity. Uh, in this simplified mode, we call it inspector mode. Really the only things to pick are pick a probe, and again, these are the, the probes that are on the uh, initial release list. Uh, later on, we will be supporting in the second release of the instrument, we will be supporting the mini DFR probe, the DFRP probe with a graphite delay tip. This probe is designed specifically for inspecting thin plastic materials, such as uh, blow molded bottles and things like that. And then we have our series of K pens, straight 45 and 90 degree K pens. Uh, these will also be supported in the second release. Let's take a look at a different probe. We'll switch to the CA211 probe. 
Now the CA211 is typically used for a little bit thicker materials. So let's do a calibration. Now there's two steps to calibrating a direct contact probe. The first step is used to establish probe delay. And to do that, we have a zero block that is built into the kickstand of the instrument. So we'll put just a drop of couplant on there. And we couple our probe to the zero block. And the instrument acquires the data from the zero block. And now it's time to go to our calibration block. I'm going to change to a block that's just about three inches. So we're going to say two inches, 0.983. Okay, we're done. And we'll go to our taller block at 2.983. Instrument locks in. Take it off. 2.983. And now we can measure our longer blocks. On the A scan, we can see that that longer block is off to the side. It's 4.9 inches. The measurement is the measurement carrot here is indicating it's off screen. So what we can do is go home, go to the measure menu, increase our range a bit. And now we're showing 10 inches of range. So we can go to a 7.95 inch block. And there's our longer block. And yet we can still come down to much thinner blocks. That's 0.297. And back to our 099 block, and there we are. So we can measure a very wide range of thicknesses. Um, we can go even longer yet. Okay, all the way in the back, I have a 20 inch block lying on its side. And there we go, 19.9 inches, 19.893 inches. Okay. 9.95, and so on. So just that simple to operate, just select a probe, run through the calibration process that's appropriate for that probe. Again, the direct contact probes will use the zero block, delay tip probe, the Alpha 2 DFR uh, uses interface start mode on the delay tip, so we don't need to zero that probe. All we need is one sample for velocity and the instrument is calibrated. The instrument supports all of the functionality of the DMS Go data recorder. All of the corrosion data recorder features are present here. The data recorder is an option. So the standard CL Go Plus does not include data recorder. CL Go plus DL includes the data logger, data recorder. And again, all of the same features that you have become used to on the DMS Go are here on the CL Go Plus. It's fully integrated with our Ultramate software. So you can plan your inspections in Ultramate, generate the empty data files, bring them to the instrument, open them in the data recorder, collect data, take that data back to Ultramate for analysis and reporting. All the data is stored on SD cards. The SD cards can be uh, popped in and out of the instrument here in the top. Okay. Because all of the gating and gain control is available to an expert user for adjustment. If we come to the config menu and activate the expert mode, now in expert mode, there are a great many more um, menu items available to the user. For instance, in inspector mode, uh, the gate menu is completely blank. 
In expert mode, you are free to make adjustments to the gates. For instance, if we needed to measure materials longer than 20 inches, uh, there's a good chance that you could do it with the, the CA211, but the gate, the measurement gate, ends at a little over 20 inches. You could easily come in here and increase the length of that gate for more distant materials. Uh, this is something that was done a few times on the CL5. Uh, in that instrument, it was more elaborate process and it needed our assistance at Waygate to be able to, to do that and define a new probe. Here, an expert user can come in, make the necessary adjustments, validate that the test works for their particular application, and then make use of those uh, adjustments. It's always possible to come back, select one of our probes from the list, and you will, when you change the probe selection, it will go back to the default setup for that probe. And those default setups are established mainly for steel and are intended to make operation of the instrument as simple and foolproof as possible for the common applications. Using some of the more specialized settings, it is possible to use the instrument to take accurate measurements outside of the normal range that we had anticipated in instrument development or to work with different materials than steel or aluminum, you know, the common uh, metals. It is possible to set the instrument up and use it in many applications other than the, the simple ones that we anticipated with the initial settings. That's our new CLGO Plus. Keep a watch for other videos in this series. There will be a video particularly on the delay tip probes, another specifically on contact probes and their applications. There will be one on use of the data recorder. And then we'll take a look at possibly a specialized application that isn't one of the normal run-of-the-mill things that we set up in the probe definition. Thank you for joining me. As always, if you have any questions, please reach out to remote service at bakerhughes.com with technical questions. And if you have questions about pricing and availability, uh, please reach out to one of our channel partners or to your local Waygate uh, sales engineer, and we'll be happy to help you out. So again, I'm Dan. Thank you for joining me and look forward to seeing you in the next installment.